We're getting ready to go live. We're out in the boat today. Hi, I'm Christine with Homegrown Harvest. Homegrown tomatoes, homegrown, homegrown tomatoes. tomatoes. What would life be without homegrown tomatoes? Only two things that money can't buy, and that's true love and homegrown tomatoes. I meant to have my ukulele out here, but the dogs were getting feisty coming out on the boat for the first time, so I had to go a cappella. I apologize. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christine. Find me Mark. is Boomer. And over here is Gunner. And that's Mark. Hello. Marley's over there. And this is beautiful Newfound Lake. So hi, everybody. We decided to do a remote since it is so beautiful out here that uh, we had to come out and uh, enjoy a day on the boat. So we brought the dogs out and hopefully no one will jump overboard because it's like 38 38, degrees. 39, maybe 40 degrees. Maybe now. 40 degrees in the water, but it's cold and chilly. So today I thought we would discuss um, some things you can grow in the garden that um, can help um, repel insects, biting insects, mosquitoes and, and such. Uh, a lot of the essential oils and herbs can be used um, in a homemade remedy uh, to avoid, um, you know, to repel mosquitoes or ticks. We use um, a homemade remedy that uh, somebody else has put together. Uh, it's got chamomile and rosemary and all sorts of things in it. And we spray it on the dogs before they go out with Mark to go um, trail marking and such. So um, one of the first things... Not only is it effective, but they smell moth. Well, you know, with springtime, especially up here in New Hampshire, um, we have what is called black fly season, right? Yeah. And black fly season sounds like huge black flies, like buzzing around. It's really not. They're tiny little, like, annoying insects, and uh, they're they're just a pain. Um, makes getting anything done. Don't jump out of the boat. Um, hard. So um, having anything growing in the garden or around on your patio that helps to repel these things i think is great um one of you know one of the things that comes off the top of my head is basil basil is a great um repellent um it definitely um helps the oils will help um when you use those if you see steep like a bunch of basil leaves in in um in water and then the oils from that um, but basil helps repel flies and mosquitoes in the garden um, uh, it helps to repel um, carrot flies and asparagus beetles and white flies so that's a great thing to um, to put in your asparagus bed uh, as we've talked before uh, basil is a great companion plant towards tomatoes Right, Mark? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm being, I'm being attacked by the doodle over here. So, <laughs> he gets distracted easily. It's attack of love. <laughs> um, another great herb to grow uh, is thyme. I don't have time for this. What else we got? <laughs> thyme repels black flies, deer flies, fleas, mosquitoes, and ticks. So, thyme is a great... Um, additive to uh, grow in your garden. They also call may, uh, uh, black flies mayflies, which makes them sound very festive. Oh, it's the mayflies, yeah. Don't, where are you going? Not good. Um, so thyme though is a great, makes a great ground cover and it also helps maintain soil structure. So it's really good to grow as far as that is concerned in your garden. It would be great to grow, grow on a slope, if you have slopes. Um, or if you've been in an area that's been heavily logged or treed, uh, it's a good thing to, to, to put in to soak up the, um, the water and to help um, the soil structure. The other thing about thyme, it has these beautiful little flowers and it brings in tons of pollinators. I mean, we've looked at our plants and they look like they're alive because there's so many bees um, on it that the whole bush moves. Um, so, and time's easy to grow in containers as well if you don't have a raised bed garden um, and you just want to have some time, you, you know, it, it's a good thing for the, um, the patio as well. Uh, in the garden, 
Um, it will help deter uh, corn earworms, cabbage loopers, cabbage worms, slugs, tomato hornworms, and white flies. So again, thyme is a great uh, companion plant uh, in the garden for uh, tomatoes and cabbages and stuff like that. What color is your shirt? It's purple. Lavender. <laughs> Lavender. I, I have a lot of purple clothes. I, I'm very fond of the color purple, and I like to grow it in the garden as well. Uh, lavender is one of our favorites to grow. It's not only a beautiful plant, it, it again, it helps to repel black flies, deer flies, mosquitoes, uh, moths, and slugs. So, moths um, and slugs, you say? <laughs> Lavender likes dry soil, so if you've got uh, dry soil somewhere, uh, it's great for borders near rocks and fences, and, and, and it will help soften those areas. Um, and again, it's another wonderful uh, addition for um, your garden because it attracts a lot of bees. Spring should smell like lavender and wet rain. Wet rain? Wet As rain. opposed to dry rain. Right. Always. <laughs> Yarrow is another one to consider. Um, beneficial insects love yarrow. It attracts bees, ground beetles, hoverflies, ladybugs. Peter, Paul, and Mary? Wasn't, yarrow, wasn't it Peter Yarrow? No, I don't believe so. No. Was it? No. No. Parasitic and predatory wasps. Um, one thing, when people say, use these terms, predatory wasps and parasitic wasps, those sound like, who would want that in our garden? Um, Mark, do you know why you'd want a parasitic wasp in your garden? What does the parasitic wasp do? They're nasty and they got tattoos and they look bad. No, what do well, they actually, do? Actually, you know, one of the things that, you know, everyone knows, I love tomatoes, homegrown tomatoes. And one of the enemies of tomatoes, of course, is the green horned worm. <laughs> and if you see those lurking on your fat on your tomato stalks, you want to get them off and squish them, but be careful because they're a real the same color they are inside they are outside they are inside but if you see one with little like it looks, like a, looks like a dinosaur it's got little white almost like stegosaurus things on the back of it a uh, horn one like that don't kill that one because that Keep one that. is playing host to parasitic, parasitic wasps. wasps and when the parasitic wasps are born they eat more hornworms. Right, so, so basically it's a really good thing to have in your garden. Parasites can be okay. It depends. There's a great book called Good Bug, Bad Bug, and I forget who wrote it, and I highly recommend it because it's just a good, you know, um, source, you know, so you understand that there are good bugs and there are bad bugs. Um, not all bugs are bad, unless you're my sister, in which case... Yes, all bugs are bad, but not in the garden. Um, that's that's not true. Don't pick on your sister. She's probably watching. She probably is. Sorry, sis. <laughs> but yarrow is also good because it, it, it repels biting insects, including fleas and ticks and, and um, mosquitoes. And in the garden, it deters um, cucumber beetles, Mexican bean be uh, bugs, beetles, and squash bugs. So yarrow would be great with your cucumbers and squash and melons and such like that. Another one, catnip. Now, if you have cats, you may not want to put this in your garden because it does attract your cats and they'll be rolling all over it. Um, but if you don't have cats and you don't have to worry about it, catnip's great because it repels mosquitoes more than DEET. Did you know that? There's been a study, according to the American yeah. Chemical... Jeez. Watch the dogs. Um, according to the American Chemical There'll Society, landing parties that uh, catnip repels uh, mosquitoes more than DEET. So if you want an organic deterrent. Um, whoa. Oh, that was their warning system. Good dogs. So it also repels ticks and biting fleas. Good boys. Uh, it's a member of the mint family, so I would guess that it could be pretty invasive, like mint can. Um, in the garden, it repels cabbage loopers and Colorado bean beetles, fleas, and squash bugs. So it's another great thing to couple in with your cabbages and squash. Uh, so that leads us to peppermint and other mints. Mints are great in the garden as far as deterring um, other insects. Uh, they repel aphids, 
cabbage loopers, flea beetles, squash bugs, and, and white flies. Uh, I would recommend if you're going to use mint that you you um, put it in a container and you, you can stick the container right into the garden. If you plant it, it can become very invasive. And we've had a problem with that in the past where all of a sudden you're growing mint everywhere and you really didn't want to do that. So, can you think of any more? Uh, lemonade? Lemongrass. Cool refreshing drink? How about lemongrass? <laughs> lemongrass. This is a lot of people love to uh, grow lemongrass. It repels black flies, deer flies, horse flies, mosquitoes, but it also attracts bees. I think I think a lot of people like don't they juice that stuff? Yes, I think some of the hippy dippies. Yeah, I'm yeah, I, I don't know. I know, look at it. I'm dressed like this and I'm talking about the hippy dippies. Watch there's a dog. Hey. <laughs> So, the there's also something called citronella grass, and that repels mosquitoes. Citronella, citronella, it's very all I hear is citronella all the time. It's very fragrant after rainfall. Oh, that was Cinderella. You know, yes, that They was... make them candles out of that. Remember when you yes. were little, you'd smell them citronella candles here? Right. And finally, I think uh, sage is another great one to grow in your garden. Except um, then your daughter will pick it, dry it, and sage your house for to, as a part of a cleansing ritual. And that you can do that, but it's also if you're if you're if you're by the fire pit and there's a lot of mosquitoes, and you grab some sage, you throw that into the fire pit, and that will burn off. That will help to um, get rid of the. Uh, the mosquitoes and um so that's a, another good one uh it also makes a really good bug spray if you use that with rosemary mint and apple cider vinegar um so there's a lot of things you can do with with these herbs these these ten, <laughs> these tend to um as we said these were the ones that we like to use to repel insects and um you know they're great culinary um in the, in the garden as well. So, um, other than that, I think that that covers today's live homegrown, homegrown harvest. tomatoes. Homegrown tomatoes. Why would life be Follow us on Facebook tomatoes? and Only please send us some questions for our Thursday live, where we like to answer our friends' um, questions about gardening. Tomatoes. Have a great day, everybody. Peace out. I can't see. <laughs> the thing on. <laughs> <laughs>